Hello subscribers and watchers, this is Vivs from Slidenerd here, what's up? In this video, we are going to talk about fragment object states and fragment transactions. Now if you guys have heard these words before, let's find out what they mean and what do they do in Android. So first, talking about fragment states. A fragment object can exist in three different states. Let us see what they are. First, when you say fragment f equals to new fragment, it exists as a simple Java object which is just like any other object which you create in Java. But at this point, the fragment manager is not aware of this object. In the second step, the fragment object gets associated with the fragment manager or you can say the activity. It is at this point when the onAttach method inside the fragment's lifecycle is executed and the fragment is aware of the activity's existence or you can say it gets a reference to the activity's context. But at this point, the fragment may or may not be seen by the user. Remember, it is not necessary that every fragment has a UI. The part of the fragment having a UI is kept completely different from the part of the fragment being an object or being shown to the activity or being linked with it. So let's talk about what happens next. Next, the fragment is actually being shown to the user as a UI element and that is the third state of the fragment when it is 1. An object in Java, 2. Linked with the activity and 3. Also being seen by the user. So these are the three states in which a fragment object exists. Now remember, there is a very fine line of difference between the second state and the third state and we will talk about this when we talk about fragment transactions in detail right at the end of this video. So what is a fragment transaction? Well, the idea of the transaction comes from database world. If you guys have heard about databases before. You have something called asset properties, atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. Now the idea behind the entire fragment transaction concept is that there are several fragments and you want to manipulate several of them at the same time under one single operation. That means add fragment A, remove fragment B, replace fragment C with fragment D and all these three steps that you do they are considered to be a single operation when the user is interacting with your app and that kind of interaction can be supported with a fragment transaction in Android. So add, remove, replace the fragments, commit the transaction. Remember committing the transaction is very important. You add both, you remove A, then you replace fragment B with fragment C. At the end when you commit the transaction that's when you see all the changes on the screen otherwise it's not gonna happen. Let's talk about each operation in detail. Let's talk about adding a fragment. So you have your activity over here. You create the fragment object. Then you begin the fragment transaction because within the transaction you're gonna add the fragment. Then you simply add the fragment by having this reference or object added to it. You commit the transaction. And remember, all the lifecycle methods execute inside the fragment when you add the fragment to the activity because it is just like declaring the fragment inside your XML, right? So the add method looks something like this. You have to specify three parameters. One, the ID of the layout inside which you want to add the fragment. For example, you may have a relative layout, you may have a linear layout. Give it an ID and then use that ID over here to specify that your fragment is going inside that layout. And then there's a the fragment object and third, a string tag to get a reference to the fragment later. Now this is the third part about the string tag is just like giving a name to the fragment. Later you can call the fragment using that name which you give here while adding it. And we will see how this is done in the next video when we will work this out on Android Studio. Let's talk about removing a fragment. It's pretty similar. Let's say you have a fragment A on the screen. You want to remove this. So get the fragment object using the ID or tag. Remember? While adding, we supplied this tag and while removing, we use the tag to find it first. Then we begin the transaction, we remove the fragment, we commit the transaction and we are basically done. So as soon as you commit, you will see the changes on the screen take place. And then all the lifecycle methods inside the fragment execute. If you guys remember the fragment lifecycle where I've talked about it in one of my videos. There are different methods on destroy view, on destroy, on detach. They all get executed when you're removing the fragment from the activity. So the remove method looks something like this. You just have to pass the object that you want to remove. 
and that means first you have to find the object and that is the reason why in step one I said get the fragment object using ID or tag one more thing to notice is that you cannot use the fragment object after removing it because it is the UI is completely destroyed and the fragment is not associated with the activity anymore but it may or may not be null at this point remember the part about it existing as a Java object is different from the part about it being linked with the activity so let's talk about replacing a fragment now this replace method is more like a convenience operation now most of the times you'll be removing one fragment and adding another fragment so that can be combined into a single operation called replace let's see how that works you have a fragment a you want to replace this fragment a with something else so let's see how that is done we remove the fragment one and we add another fragment so when we do this inside the first fragment that we remove we are calling the destruction lifecycle methods and inside the second ones we are calling the constructive methods that like on create view on create on activity created and stuff so create a new fragment object and simply specify the layout ID where the old fragment is contained and called replace now we will see how the syntax looks exactly there is one very important thing to notice let's take a very small example you have a linear layout I have given it an ID saying ID group then I have the fragment where I have some class given to it and there is an ID to the frag when you replace a fragment by saying transaction.replace you supply the ID of the group where the fragment is contained not the ID of the fragment this replace operation is like saying replace the content of this group which is this linear layout with the new fragment object which is given here new frag now let's talk about something attach and detach a fragment now this is part where we will be discussing about the difference between the second and the third object state of a fragment so here we have a fragment over here normally when you create a fragment what do you do you create the fragment object associate with the activity and then you create the UI right the on attach method is called inside the fragment to notify that the fragment has been attached to the activity but when you say transaction dot attach you simply create the UI it is like keeping the fragment object and its relationship with the activity intact but simply hiding and showing the fragment by calling attach and detach so remember the on attach method in the fragment is called to notify that the fragment has been linked to your activity but the transaction dot attach is like showing the UI so now at this point the fragment is shown to the user so whenever you say transaction dot attach in the fragment lifecycle on attach method does not get called because your fragment is already associated with the activity when you have on attach being called now again if you guys are not so clear about this we will work this out on Android studio and at that time you'll observe this clearly because remember transaction dot attaches just like saying show me the fragment and when you say transaction dot detach it's like hide the fragment so at that point the fragment is not completely destroyed neither is its relationship with the activity destroyed remember that again let's talk about the normal destruction process when you say fragment dot remove or something so you have your UI being destroyed the association or link with the activity is also destroyed and the fragment object is also destroyed but then when you call on detach you're notified here that the fragment has been disassociated with the activity inside the lifecycle remember this is the lifecycle method on detach but then when you say transaction dot detach it is like saying hide the fragment you're not destroying it you're simply hiding it so in this case your on detach method does not get called because it's called only when you're destroying the link between the fragment and the activity which is not happening when you see transaction dot detach now again if this last part it's not so clear we will be working this out on Android studio with a nice example so I hope you guys have understood something about the basics of fragments and transactions if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel comment and let me know your thoughts I would love to hear from you guys thanks for watching I'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day